Hey guys, funny guy Timmy here. Uh, wanted to do a video on a really neat trick to save possibly a ruined track or a ruined take. Now, some of you guys may have heard of a deesser, which is where you take off the sharp sibilance of a take. So after you've recorded it, it sounds a little too bright, a little too crisp, and it's a little hard to hear. And you'll apply a de-esser, which will actually smoothen out the S's, which is basically EQing out the higher frequencies. What I'm about to show you is what I like to call a de-puffer. I don't know if that's what it's called, but basically you're getting rid of pops or plosives right in the microphone. And I'm going to try to do one for you guys, and I'm going to show you how this can be used and how to make one. Now, what I'm working with right now is Audacity. The reason I'm showing you Audacity is because it's free. A lot of people are using it, including people that are making six-figure incomes. I'm not lying about that. A lot of voice talent are, are actually using this, and it blows my mind. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to record some audio. I'm going to bring open this up a little bit. It's a little quiet. I don't know why that is. Testing. One, two, three. All right. It's not bad. Check the levels a little bit. Turn it down on my headphones so it doesn't hurt me. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deliberately puff air into the microphone. Uh, now, a plosive. Plosive. God dang it. See, this is... Normally, I'm trying to avoid plosives, but this time I'm actually going to try to deliberately and intentionally pop the mic with a plosive or two, which is a puff of air that, you know, just is supposedly ruins a track. Now, that's not going to say that you can actually prevent tracks being ruined by all plosives, but I am going to show you how you might be able to save one or two if it's a light plosive. Now, I'm just kind of watching, seeing if I get a good popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. So anyway, all right, that's probably good. Stop. All right. So I'm actually going to take this because I got a couple in here. Uh, and this is what I'm actually looking for. These. These. That's what you're looking for. Well, actually, that's what you're trying to avoid in most circumstances. So come out of here. All right. So this is all I want to work with. Because I don't need the rest of that. I delete that as well. I'm going to normalize this to zero so I can see all this a little bit better. All right. So this is the ugly, ugly plosive. So we're going to listen back to this popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. So anyway, all right. Okay, so you heard the two pops right here. And then, of course, that one. So, uh, first, I am actually, this is going to be my entire process. So, I'm going to come in here, gonna get noise sample, select the entire thing, eliminate the noise, which only did a very slight something. Copy, paste, compress, slight compression. Normalize. If you guys uh, have never seen me do any of this, my entire editing process, there will probably be a link down in the description to show you guys. All right, so now I've done all that. So all my basic um, editing. So I've normalized, I've compressed, I've EQ'd, I've cleaned up. So let's listen to the whole thing. Popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. So, okay, so those are still there. Good. Which, I mean, normally wouldn't be good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this, which is just the, select this. Okay, so that has the pop right in there. So I'm going to go into equalizing. A lot of this is going to be in equalizing. Same thing with DSing is going to be in the equalizer. And I've already created a um, preset and it's, I call it deep puffer. And that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be smoothening out 
the lower frequencies because that's where that puff is coming from. And we're basically shifting it. So I'm trying to heighten the higher frequencies and smoothing out and or getting rid of the lower frequencies of the popping noise. And note, I'm only selecting that sound. I'm not selecting the whole thing, just that sound. So let's see if this does anything. So now let's listen to it. Popping with... Popping with... Okay, let's undo. Okay. Pop. Okay. Copy. Paste. Boop. Let me go back in. So I just got rid of that because I want to... I want to do a side-by-side. -side. Okay, that's the popping sound again. Okay. You can see how awful and sharp and distorted it is. So we're going to go into here, reapply that, smoothen it out, popping. So I'm going to go back in here. Peter Piper. Peter Piper. So first one's here, this one, Peter. P yep, right there. You can hear that, right? It's low frequency. It's very low frequency. That's what we're trying to get rid of. That's the part of the plosive that's ruining this whole thing. That's why it has this huge dip and these long bands in its frequency. So, I'm going to go back in, equalize, same thing, smoothen it out. See? Not as bad. Peter Piper and So where's the other one? Piter. Piper Piper and Piper Piper. I don't know if this one's that bad. I think it is. I think I think there's a there's a plosive right there. It's a very slight plosive. Piper and stuff like that. So anyway, all right, that's probably good. All right, so now let's go back. Let's go back. Popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. Delete that. All right, so now I just have the two similar tracks. Popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. 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 There's another one in here. There's another one. It's going to bug me. Where are you? Peter Piper and stuff like that. Piper and stuff. Right there. Piper and stuff. Piper? Really? I didn't I didn't kill it? I didn't kill the whole thing? Okay. Okay. Let's try it again. Popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. Popping with Peter Piper and stuff like that. All right, so there you go. Um, yeah, with just just EQing, we were able to get rid of the really harsh plosive in the take. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this is not a fix-all. This should not be your go-to. You should, of course, use one of these, as I showed earlier. It was incredibly successful. Careful. You should do everything that you can before it gets to this point to fix the audio, including uh, windscreens, foam windscreens, and pop shields. You should do everything that you can to prevent from plosives getting into the tank. But if you can't, and that is your good take and you're out of time, like you have to deliver this to the client. I've had times when I've, I've literally been down to the wire and, I've, and, I, and I send it to them minutes before the deadline. And, you know, I, I, I had to get this to them and I didn't have enough time to redo the whole thing, re-record, re-edit, re-cut, 
So I actually had to save, and it was really just one plosive. I think, I think this is fairly recent, and it was one plosive, and it was a good take. It was what they wanted, but there was just one pop. There was one puff that I had to get rid of, and so I depuffed it and sent it to them. They liked it. It worked. Again, do what you can before it gets to the software, before it gets into the computer. Do what you can with a foam windscreen as well as a pop shield to prevent this. Your goal is to do as little editing as possible, but it's not the end of the world. There is a way with within reason to fix plosives or de-essing or noise in the background or sharp or sibilance or flat mic. There is a way. Just work with your mic, know your voice, know your surroundings, work with your software, and get good at it. And eventually, you'll be able to make any microphone and any take usable and sound good. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to ask any other questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, until next time, peace!